Or yes, the person mm-hmm. can argue and say, oh, I wasn't going to, you know, go that far. Really? Well, we're never going to know how far um, because I, I didn't give you the opportunity to get further. Yeah. But you went far enough. Yeah. You went far enough. You did not ask. Essentially help me against my, my, my will. Like you asked and I've let you know in the past I'm not interested. In that situation, I mean, yes. like if you're going to call it play like he did, you didn't ask the other person if they wanted to play. Do you like, know what I mean? What's up with putting up the lights? And what's and up with putting the up the... Uh, yeah. So, no, there's no confusion in that one. There's no... Nothing. We can't wash that or try yeah. to embellish it anyway. So, of course, that was the end of that Egusi Soup. I mean, I already made the soup already, for sure. But, like, I'm like, yeah, at this point... Mm, mm. That like, Egusi Soup, we should have joked on the thing, safe. As in... Mm. So, <laughs> that's the Nigerian... I love how the Nigerian part comes out. As in... to bring this conversation to you today it is heavy i want to warn you up front that it is a little bit of a heavy topic however it is timely it is very much needed and i truly hope that it warms your heart it blesses you and it touches you to be a better person and to intercede on behalf of women out there who are affected by the story that we're going to be sharing today so welcome on board let's move on to meet my guest her name is Tukumba. we are talking about her experience near experience twice actually of coming close to being raped here in canada believe it or not where we go to reside so let's go over to go meet my guest Tukumba. so welcome Tukumba. Thank how you are know. you today I'm okay. Yeah? <laughs> Good. That's How, a great video, by the way. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So, you're feeling good? You're okay? Yeah. Had a good day today, I hope? For the most part, yes. <laughs> That's good. That's good. And yourself, did you have a good day too? It was mostly good. I, I got my COVID-19 vaccine oh, shot yay! today. Yay! Awesome. Awesome. I'm right behind so, you. Give me a few more months, then I'll, I'll, I'll get back. Good. Mine. That's what I want to hear. So yeah, give me a few you know, more months. Like, <laughs> we will chill now. I think people are getting it. Yes. And I hope people are kind of waking up for this whole idea of it being bad for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think I'm hoping that that will pass that. Yes. So yes I got my video, shot. And the video you did about that was very informative. I, thank I, I you. And I have to even rewind a few parts just to... Yeah. Um, remember some things my husband got his his shot already yeah, um, he, good. yeah well the first off okay for people who know me Tokubo is a really good friend of mine like we work together and that's how we met and formed a relationship and so you just told me very recently about something that happened and I was just completely shocked because I've known you for oh, quite a while a little bit of a while. Right. I want to say at least six years I've known you I think longer, but okay. It might be longer, yeah. So I'm yeah. going by my in my years at work or where we met. So okay, yes. and I'm going by that. But however, I didn't know about this part of your life. So mm-hmm. I just want to first off say thank you so much for choosing to come on board on my podcast to share this. I know you haven't shared it publicly in mm-hmm. this kind of scope. So mm-hmm. I feel really blessed that you chose me to bring this on board to come and bless somebody else and 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 hopefully teach one or two lessons to our people on how to be better and to do better. So please. I hope so too. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. That's that's the point of what I what we do here, you know? So thank you. So tell us a little bit about yourself and, you know, why you wanted to come on board and come talk to me about your near experience with rape. Okay. Well, as you said, so, well, depending on how, how long you've known me, some people call me Tokubo and okay. some people know me as Timmy Dyer. So, but most people I would say call me Tokumba, but so yes, Tokumba Timidaya. Um, I consider myself Canadian Nigerian. Um, my parents moved, I spent my life in Canada. My parents moved to Canada in the early 70s, um, and then we moved back to Nigeria at some point. So, I lived in Nigeria from the age of five to maybe 12. Oh, so you like really, 
Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. So I, I came. I think my first time. Well, being knowledgeable, I came to Nigeria at five because okay. we lived, and then I left at twelve. So yes, this this formative years, right? Um, and so um, what else? Yeah. So that's about you know why I consider myself Canadian Nigerian because reality is. <laughs> I only spent what seven years in Nigeria at best. Um, I'm a wife. I'm a mother of two. Um, what else about me? Well, I guess that's generally. Well, tell us what it was like. So I know you spent just a really short time growing up in Nigeria, but for that six years ish that you spent there, do you recall what it felt like? What it was like growing up there? Yes. So I remember. Definitely, I came from a very sheltered, protected um, upbringing, right? Um, mm -hmm. Where, so in my, so I'm the fifth of five children, and it's quite an age gap between me and my other siblings. So I would, so, so I would say I was that empty nesters baby for my parents. Ah, so there was quite, so I had a lot of adults around me, so they were quite protective. So I never, I never, I never really had that on super I didn't have as much unsupervised play if you know what I mean like so there was school and then there was home there was mm -hmm. school there was home and there was very like one or two people who I could go play with and that was it I remember that security was something that was always on high alert in fact I would say break-ins armed robbies in the home were like that the was the norm it was like the was order the of the day Yes. yes, bingo. So pretty much every night <laughs> it consisted of a very strong long prayer. Yeah. You're locking all your doors. Yeah, like you're, you're in prison. sleeping with one eye open, you know. Right, like... and then you go to bed. And so psychologically for me as a child, I I didn't I didn't feel a hundred percent safe. So normally as when you're a child, you're aloof and not aware of the dangers around. That's part of what Wait, Which part of is. Nigeria did you grow up in? Ibado. Did you spend okay. Ibado. Okay. So at that time, I just, so we never, our home was never um, robbed or um, maybe only one or two people I can say in our immediate neighborhood got mm -hmm. um, robbed, but it was just something I was very aware of. And I think it's because the adults around you are very um, aware of it. So the locking of the door, like, girl, you yeah. know how it is. You have the outer door and the inner door. <laughs> In the, in, the, in the door. Yeah, I know what you mean. The, the door with the net. Then yeah. sometimes you have the door with the net, a you, wooden door, and an iron bar. The door iron door, they door. call it the burglary proof door. My Nanja like people. Can't, I'm like sure you, you know what I mean. You, you, okay, and that's yeah. like almost every door in the house. And sometimes... You can't break through that door. You got to be like, you know, um, a welder, basically, in order to <laughs> be able to go through those burglary doors. I mean, we doors. laugh about it now, but if you think about it, yeah. it's like you literally... A prisoner in your home at that moment. Absolutely, I agree. Right, because um, let's digress. I did work in corrections in Canada, and I can tell you the lockdown's not that deep. It's <laughs> not. It's not that secure. It is not. I want to talk not, about your correction experience girl, because girl, I love CBS. Okay. <laughs> Anybody who knows me loves. I love to watch immigration TV shows. That's one of my favorite, and the. American one has way more drama than the Canadian yes, one. Yes, of course. So as, as, a, as, as an as immigration usual. officer, what's up with these people who come with live chicken and cooked meat and, you know, all kind of exotic... Okay, the cooked meat, don't judge. Oh, okay. Why should <laughs> I not judge that? It's just, just crazy. Like, what about the live chicken? Okay, if okay, I don't no, want to okay, judge... No, okay, no, 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 no. That's taking it too far. Okay. What is I'm not even that? sure how the chicken made it. How do you guys even, like, when you guys see these things, how do you keep a straight face? That's just what I want to understand. Because when I, think, I watch the show, the officers are so professional, well-behaved. I think you become desensitized to an extent because you've okay. seen, you see it often, right? So you're, you're, when, you're, when you're working in a concentrated environment, all you see is, so when you're in law enforcement, most of the time you deal with people who are breaking the law. Usually, that's, yeah, that's true. That's what Absolutely. it is. So you get mm -hmm. used to seeing people or being around people who are not following the rules. So now you might see people come up with new creative ways of doing it, and like, oh wow, that's different. But typically, over time, you're like, okay, same old, same old. Yeah, you've seen you it all kind up, of thing. Yes, you start coming up with um, what's the word? Um, like FAQs or what to watch out for. Uh, this 
Seasoned whites of this dance. country usually okay. have these things to flag. Oh, you know, I mean, to the point that you'll see a white person who's an officer who said, you have egg seed? Egg seed? You have like seed? <laughs> the seed? No, no, like, no, you can't have that. Is it bl blended? It's good. Is this the seed? And or you're the shocked, you know, you're just like, ah, he knows. Because, it, because they've seen it, they've seen yeah. it all the time so you, you get used to it right um plus when, when they're also being filmed i mean you're being filmed so you're a bit more like uh -huh. you're, you're a bit you're you're more professional than you would than normally you might would normally be, be uh, okay. if because big brother's watching i just right? always wondered how they kept this straight face because i just know that i wouldn't be able to handle it <laughs> i would i would be and judging I think they also have they have some editing too right so if, if the reaction too. is a bit too much they might <laughs> Cut it is out. Part out. <laughs> or they might leave it in for good dramatics, oh, but yeah. I think because you know you're being watched, they're more mindful of their their behavior, right? Yeah. So yeah. yeah. No, thank you for sharing that. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. I do want to ask, going back to the fact that you kept using the word that you lived a sheltered life, being the last, you know, and the youngest and also a big age gap between your siblings and yourself. Mm -hmm. What does, do you remember, I guess I should say, if there was a difference in the way boys and girls were raised, either in your family or the families around you? Do you feel like there was a difference? And what was that difference? Did that impact your definition of living a sheltered life? Um, I don't, definitely was a difference. I think, I'm not sure what age I would call it, but well, okay. again, somewhere between five and 12, I definitely knew that there was more danger for me as a girl, as a girl, than there was okay. for a boy, because usually it was, um, so you know, for kids in general is, oh, careful. So a stranger doesn't kidnap you. And that goes for boys and girls. Right. Mm -hmm. But then yes. as a girl, there was an added layer of be careful. Someone does not hurt you that way. Now they never really, you know how old school parents. <laughs> they never. But they really can hurt a boy that way too. That's true, but think right? about mentality, right? That's fair. The mindset yep. is when we when when we often think about assaults, especially that of a sexual nature. It's you most of the time you think about women or girls. Yes. You don't think about boys nowadays. People are understanding that it, this can happen to both male children, female children, or males or females. But yes. predominantly, statistically, the, the number is way is more female than they are males. I would right? agree. I would I would drop in real quick and just say that it's also possible that for boys they're underreported because boys Absolutely. and men don't typically come forward as much as women do. And even a lot of women don't even report either. I agree. So it's, totally it's possible agree. that that statistic is just not complete because yes. that information does not exist. Absolutely. I have always said that stats are as good as who collects them and how you fine tune them, right? hundred um, percent. There's no doubt that, you know, there's definitely more under, under reporting um, as males. Um, but I will say though that I remember this this topic being more in, in the, more in the limelight lately. I asked a friend of mine, like a, a male friend of mine, said, "You know, um, as a guy, do you do you feel con do you, are you concerned of your safety when you walk on the street at night?" That's a good question, right? I, and he said, "No." He said, "The most if you're working in a bad neighborhood, it's more of oh, I don't going to get robbed, but that's not it's not." it's not gender specific or it's not sex specific, right? Yeah, absolutely. Right? It's anybody, anyone can be a victim to that. But he said, I said, but do you feel like when you're walking alone at night or in, in, in a, or somewhere, or are you ever concerned about your safety when it comes to being sexually, it's just an assault. He said, no, n never. Wow. She said, I've never felt that way. That's I a don't deep think question. Do. So, so, so even though definitely this way, this, it, 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 the stats may not fully capture um, boys or male, mm -hmm. I still feel that when it gets a certain stage, it's a, a woman or a girl, no matter what stage of life you are, it's always a concern. It's always a concern. Or you're, or you're, you're mindful of it, right? Um, and so I think that's where, even though it's not reported, that's where it's unfortunately more experienced, I would say, um, by women. Yeah. 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 Because the reason I ask that question is, you know, I feel like growing up in Nigeria as well, I, I was in Nigeria until I was about, you know, early teenage years before I so moved over like here. Me. Yeah. You, like girls are really raised to be, you know, 
a very sheltered life raised to be protected raised to feel like they are cherished and um more harm can come to them than can come to boys mm -hmm. and they're not necessarily raised to be prepared for this harm no. so yes you're raised like you use that word sheltered and i really like that word mm -hmm. that way raised to be protected and you need to be careful about this and about mm -hmm. that but it's never about if this does happen what are you supposed to do what do you do how do you take care of yourself i was gonna say you know society you know um, I find raises often raises girls to be responsible, to be solely responsible for their safety. It's we don't. I, I find that you know it's often there isn't much talk to boys because it starts at a certain age, right? You don't wake up one day and just do something. It's, it's it's a gradual process, right? There's not much talk to boys, young men or men, about what consent is, right? About um about um, not, not being a predator, about consequences of such behavior, right? Um, this, it's kind of like when, you know, when boys sow their oats, if you, if you get what I mean. It's, oh, he's a, oh, ah, correct guy, you know, yeah, bad old, you're right? a man. Yeah, hey, do you understand? But if it's, if it's, if it's a girl, ah, she's a... Mm. Yeah, she's the, right? all kinds of labels, yeah. Yeah, so, so it's the same thing when it comes to that safety part, whereby it's almost as if the total onus of the job is on you as a girl, not to be in a position to be for that to be done to, and not to have that be done to you, and forgetting that you have to have the conversations with the other party. Other it takes person. two. Yeah. No one gets no. There's no. No one gets assaulted on their own. Someone has to do something to someone. So, so why, to why don't we? People. Yeah. Why double is standard. It's double standard, but I'm just double trying standard. to think about why we raise our boys and girls that way then. Like, what is it within our Nigerian culture, or maybe I can extend it to say African culture, right. that or we are, you know? General culture. Or general, yes, I right. agree, mm -hmm. 100%. I think so, for example, from someone who was, who was, who's gone to the school system in both countries, now, keep in mind, five to seven, sorry, five to 12 <laughs> in the, in the early, in the early nineties, it's very different from today. So I'm going yeah. to speak on time frame, right? At that time, there wasn't any sex education in Nigeria, to my knowledge. Ask about when I moved back to Canada at 12, there was sex education. That's not in the curriculum. I don't know about now, but back then there was no, all yeah, you got was, was your science class where you learned about the reproductive system. The, 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 the only reference to reproduction is mommy and daddy. When a man and a woman marry, and to, there's even they don't even entertain the idea, or back then of this should never occur outside of that, right? So never mind. Oh, this the security part, right? So usually back then, when a girl becomes of age, right, when you mm -hmm. you go into puberty or whatever it may be, the most many of us who are of that gen of that generation of that era got if you got any talk at all, because some people said their parents never had a single talk to them about about, about puberty, about boys, about girls, sex, nothing. I don't boys. remember my parents having this conversation with Bingo. me. Uh, you know, and, that's, I and that's very normal. Yeah, at that time, right? Um, the most you would get as a girl at that time that was common was don't get pregnant don't go, bingo don't go near a boy don't let a boy touch you now you don't even know what touch you means okay don't let a boy touch you you're gonna get pregnant don't let them catch you for a corner mm -hmm. that's it like and you're like catch me in the corner what happens in the corner like at that point you don't even know what they're talking about right that's the most you get right and and then some people get nothing at all so you often learn about these things from your friends and maybe that super cool auntie who's a bit more liberal and speaks yeah. about it, right? So it's there isn't much education to begin with. And then never mind about awareness and safety. So if you're not even talking openly about what <laughs> what should be spoken about, never mind now the other layers of it and safety, right? And you know, there's this mindset of oh, um, almost as if it's it's a, it's a man's natural nature to you know to be prowling like i mean you can go into the science of it or whatnot that's not even the point the point is irrespective of whether you say men are moved by what they see and blah 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 blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. Mm -hmm. at the end of the day there's a choice yeah you you it, it does not give you the right to 
and force yourself on someone, to pressure yourself on someone, and to do harm on someone. Period. Period. I feel like we're raised differently in the sense that it's almost always the girl's responsibility. And, and, and unfortunately, it's always the girl's fault. Do you see what so I mean? Even if we're not, so even if the girl child is not raised to protect herself. Right. So, it's always oh, her fault. It's still her fault anyway. Yes. Because one of the first things people will say um, when you hear, so I guess just to, in general statements here, right? So oftentimes when the, the same issue of don't go near a boy, don't let him touch you, whatever, 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 it's you, 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 you. It's not, you, you, it's not the other your, person. It's about bingo. you. You yes. don't go near a boy. You don't yes. let them. So what about the boy? Bingo. How you about... hardly hear, yes. You hardly hear boys being told, um, you know, be, res be, no, be respectful of a girl. Don't be, no, no. Don't yeah. do anything she doesn't, don't do anything she doesn't do. want to. Yes. Make don't sure pressure you get her. her consent verbally. Yes. Ask exactly. over and over and again And at any time sure. that consent can be withdrawn. Withdrawn. That's go. another whole story, but they're not even ready for that yet. So, so let's off, let's even first start with consent in yes, itself that's really before scary we even stuff. take it to the next level level of okay. So oftentimes, I remember growing up when you would hear about um, the few times you would hear people talk about somebody did something to somebody, right? Mm -hmm. Or a woman got hurt. Will be what were you doing there? Yeah, what were you wearing? Back to my point about you being the you being blamed. What were you doing there? Why were you there? What were you wearing? What did you say? What cues did you give yeah. the person? Why did you go alone? You know? Exactly. It's, it's always Back about down to you, your you, fault. you. Exactly. And so, you know, that's the, that's, that's the way it's, it's been. And so the older I got, um, I've always been in that mindset. Oh, be careful, be careful. Of course, you know, girls, most of the time, it's like, don't get pregnant. Don't you get pregnant. Don't you get pregnant. Your life is you know, over. Pretty yeah. much, it's like, there are other yeah. things that are actually... That I, that I would I would consider that worse than that. Um, of having course. a child, right? But the mindset of you know, of of that era is, ooh, having a child in wedlock. That's like yeah, that's, that's the worst that's thing. The thing. That's all yeah. that matters. Not addressing the assault part. Not just anything. And then the shame. All of these things are often why a lot of people don't come out to say anything because of the shame and the stigma that comes with it. You know, it's taken a lot for me to even speak about this. I, mean, I haven't even gotten to the part where it's personalized to me, but it's like, you know, I remember when we had this talk about whether or not to make this an audio or a video, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and why would that matter? Maybe because of, oh, no, if once it's out there, people know. Okay, people know, so why, is, you know, yeah. why, why am I the carrier of the quote-unquote shame of what, wow. of what is, occurred to me? This is deep. Do you see what I'm saying? So I even me as an adult you. woman, a grown woman, okay, I'm about to, I'm, I, I, I had to, I had to be like, wait a minute, am I okay with that? Am I okay with what people might think or feel? I, I think to myself, it's, that's where I can't let the shame of, I can't let what other people, I can't let people put their shame on me. I'm not the one who did something wrong. Somebody That's else did. Right. I'm not the one who should Can be ashamed. Can we get this word right now? This is word right now. You're not the person who did something wrong. Absolutely. Why should you continue to live like you did something wrong and carry wrong. that shame? Because Absolutely. I was surprised. We talked about this. It was going to be audio. Mm -hmm. And I was ready for that. And then I called you and you were like looking snatched and looking <laughs> good. my everyday and look. What's talking about? <laughs> Girl, you're just, I, well, your everyday look is really good. So I'm you just know, like, girl, I better it's go. COVID. We ain't going nowhere. So you best look. Well, I was in the my pajamas and all. here is the Kumba looking all ready to go prime and proper. And I'm just like, I'm in my pajamas. I thought this was audio. I'm like, <laughs> I better run and go dress up because hey. this is a blessing and an opportunity that you're willing to do this on both video and audio because it's, it's bravery even doing it on audio Yes, and bravery I, putting your story out there, putting your face absolutely. to your story. I just, I'm just getting goosebumps. I'm just really, really honored that, you know. Oh, you um, I, I thank you for the opportunity journey. too, right? Because it's, I hope that, you know, it, it helps someone, right? Because yes. uh, I know a lot of times, sometimes we, when we don't experience, when we haven't experienced something firsthand, it's hard to have empathy or to understand. And this is not one of those things where you want someone to experience it, to understand where you're coming from. Oh, absolutely not. Because I don't yeah. wish that experience on, on anyone. 
yeah. right? And you know, and part of why I wanted to share um, my stories because I'm somebody who, for those who know me really well, and, and even in my earlier days, you would know I'm very security conscious. I am very security conscious, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, and I, that's part of just again upbringing, the sheltered life, um, you know, personality maybe, but also um, training. So, as you know, you you know you know my work history a lot. Yeah. I've done different jobs, right? And yeah. a lot of my jobs in the past have been an enforcement, law yeah, enforcement, security, yeah, but that's immigration, insurance, CDSA, security, corrections. Yeah. So that's my background. So I've had like training in self defense. So, um, you know, and so I want to believe that a, unlike the average person, I'm probably more alert about my security than the average person just because I've been trained that way. So, well, I think I was predisposed to be that way because I was raised that way, but then my, my professional life also made it heightened. So I've had this has happened to me twice. of worth mentioning, right? Okay. Um, so my age, so the first time I was 19, um, at that point, I didn't have any, I didn't have any training, like physical self-defense training per se, but I had a little bit of, you know, um, seen a few quick videos, not videos, but like quick things of how to- um, Like defend yourself? Yeah, how to unravel yourself if okay. you can. Okay. I, I, I know I, I, I had seen that a few times here and there. Um, and, you know, being, and then I was in university. So, of course, here in, this is in Canada, right? In Canada, so, again, okay. mindset and approach towards things. So, of course, later on when we talk about what can we do differently as a society or in Nigeria in general, um, some of the things that were done at the university, I think, helped me. So, the university I went to was McMaster, and they were very big on um, talk about security and safety for girls on campus, right? University is a place where a lot of people are exploring. They're young. Mm-hmm. It's their first time out of home. So they're unsupervised. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, we had a, I don't remember what it was called, but the student union had a, a branch that dealt with um, education and things for, and tips for girls. So they had this coaster. So the date, date rape drug became popular, I, I think, around that time. The, the early 2000s mm-hmm. I, I i but i just know yeah, that at that, that time yeah. I, I remember at that time you know they, they they came up with coasters whereby if you if you go to the a restaurant or the bar or a friend's house and you have that coaster if someone has laced the drink you can actually drop a, a bit oh, on the wow. coaster if it changed color then you it, know it, that it's been laced bingo oh, wow that's how cool. How f- forward thinking, this is 20 something years ago, by the way. Okay. How forward wow. thinking people had gone in terms of creating little things you can keep with you for your safety. Because Dave, it was another thing that happens to people is whereby something happens to you and you don't even remember, but you know something happened to you. So, going to, so that's one thing. So, I remember that. I remember in school, they, the, um, the student union ensured that the university installed um, more lights in areas of the mm-hmm. school, near the study centers, places like, you know, the libraries, um, parking lots, and then they also had, like, an emergency button, like, so if you made it to the light, you pressed it, it goes straight to security, and they know yes. where you're located at. Yeah. So there were so many things that were put in place um, for safety. So, so I was one of those people how you would say, so back then, there was no smartphone, okay? There was no, I mean, it was analog. It was... It was in was the it, flip? I, I think know, it was... Flip I think it was... It, it was this is before the flip phones. This is before flip phones. It was oh. the one where you pulled the antenna. You, you know, it's funny you just pull the pull the little antenna. Yo, I think out. that I might have still been in Nigeria then. I don't oh, know. Oh, okay. That was a Telus phone. I remember. That's my very first phone. Mm. I I was feeling really fly. Yeah. <laughs> my it was it really was fly. Phone. My first was, phone was a flip phone, and I remember just. Oh, that like, was what? that was. Was that the razor? What what the what? The razor. There I remember. Hello, like, Moto. Hello, Moto. <laughs> <laughs> Where are those phones now? That phone know. was the best. If you wanted to hang up on somebody, smack. It was just just the phone. best phone for now hanging up on people. You can't really just click. It's not. It's, no, not, it's, as it's not as effective. But um, humor is my thing, by the way. You, you already know this, but <laughs> I joke a lot, and that's how I deal with things. So it's if you're making jokes about it, it's not because it's not a serious topic. It's just that's how I deal with it. Um. Hmm. Okay, so... I was someone who, I was that girl who I 
always told people where I was going. Well, well, I didn't go anywhere. In fact, as an adult, as my extroverted personality, but I don't necessarily like to, I'm going to this place, I'm going to that place. Yeah. It's not really my style. I like to stay home and be extroverted at home. That's huh? more my style. Yeah. Um, but, but, even, but even then, when I did leave my house, I was that girl who would always let my friends know. I was that girl who would um, only meet someone in public places of the opposite sex, right? Um, friend or not in the public place um, or with other people with me. I was that girl who wouldn't drink from open drinks. Wow. Do you know how you mix punches? So, I don't know what you mean. This so, is my point about I being know. super. So like, if I come wow. to your house and you have a you have like a little punch, I was that girl, I wouldn't drink Your it. whole security and safety measures was already to the T. Yes. As a child, as a young yes. lady at this point, young woman. Yes. So that whole coaster thing about need, I didn't even need that because I wasn't even going to drink. That's okay. where I'm going. Exactly. <laughs> Give me a water bottle that is closed. And in fact, sometimes I and I'm my carrying water my bottle. water bottle in my backpack and I know what you mean. That was me. Yeah. So that was me, right? And I so I was I was one of those extreme people. So it, so I had like two friends um who, who I would call if I was going somewhere. And then I took it one step further. Not only would I let people know where I was going, what I was doing, who, I would let that person know that people know where I'm at. Wow, girl. I took it to that level. Tips. So, I love so my, it. Yes. So, my, so the first tips. experience I had, why it took me by surprise was because of the level I was operating under. It was an eye opener that you could do everything and it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't prevent you um, f from, it doesn't prevent someone from a, a making an attempt. The best mm. that the best that they could do is maybe help you escape it, or if unfortunately you don't escape it, maybe help Overcome. shine a light on who on, on who on who did it. Okay. If, yes. If you live if you live to tell another day, you see what I'm saying. I so see. I was that person who took it to the further level where I would even let that person know, and I wouldn't be like, "Oh, so and so as well." Well, I was I was I was, I thought I thought I, I thought I was stylish about it. So I would be with. I, I had planned calls. So you know how people do that whole, I'm going on a date, call me in 10 minutes, and, it, <laughs> and then I'll oh think, goodness. and if I say you I have to so go. so thorough. Like, yeah, so that wow. was, I had that call thing whereby I would tell the person, I would call, a friend of mine would call me when I'm there, or I would call, and mm. I'll be like, oh, yeah, I'm here with so-and-so. We're okay. going to so-and-so. So that way the person knows. That somebody else knows. Bingo. So that was me. So th this particular person, the first time it happened to me, um, I was in university, like I said, I was 19. Um, and this person was a, um, someone who it was, it was Nigerian background, who was, was a student. Um, I believe they were definitely, I think they were graduate students, I think. So, huh, okay. So it was someone who I, you know how in our Nigerian culture, brother, uncle right mm -hmm. it's someone i would have said i'll call brother this brother that on the normal circumstances right and um they tutored me for one of my courses and so and this is like and that course was a, a six credit course that's like what first semester second semester so this at this point i've known this person a year at least so they tutored me and i i passed the course thank god that 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 course and I were not friends, but anyway, I passed the I passed the course, yeah. and I was very grateful. I said, "Oh, I'm very, very grateful." You know, I wanted just to give the person a gift, like, "Oh, can I get you something or a gift card?" And he said, "Oh, you know what? What I would really appreciate is um, a goosey soup, right?" And mind you, this is the era of there wasn't YouTube then. There wasn't. It's not like now that you can just go online, just Google something or watch a video and do it. So if you didn't know how to do something. You didn't know how to do it. That, is, that was pretty much it. The worst you would get is a, a written stuff. A written I didn't, recipe, it wasn't or if you had a recipe book, yeah, I this guess. is like over twenty years ago. So like, not in data today. So I said, oh, okay, no problem. I'll make because I'll make it, and you know, you can pick it up or. Whatever. And he said, oh, you know what? I would actually like to learn how to make it so that I know how to do it myself. Oh, reasonable oh, request, right? It is very reasonable, and you've known request. this person for a year. So I've known this person for, I think, two years, but they've tutored me at least a year. So at this point, I've known this person, I want to say, for at least two years. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, never made any, never made me feel unsafe. Now I knew the person quote unquote liked me or was interested in me, but I, I made it very clear that I wasn't. And I think I had a boyfriend at the time. So I was like, no, um, I'm unavailable. And I didn't give any mixed messages as, mm-hmm. as people like to use as excuse as things that you did to, um, make someone do something like that right so anyway um long story short i kind of like mm, i was kind of hesitant and he's like oh you know i would really appreciate it blah, blah blah i thought you know what i've known this person a long time so i said to him well where what's your setup like so i said well can you come to my house and make i can make it for you then he's like well then to be carrying a pot of soup back home because remember but there's no Uber. another good point it, it is no uber you got to go on the bus and that's mm-hmm. that's, yeah, that's, that's yeah. another good point so all reasonable requests. Excuses, yeah. All so I'm requests, like, okay. Sure. So I'm like, okay. I can't get. I can't make it and bring it. I can't. I can't teach him how's he going to take it back. So again, the student life. So the kids go, oh, call a cab. Call a cab. <laughs> Nobody money. has money Nobody for a cab. Has money for, no. Like anyway. No. Um. So I was like, okay, I'll go. So I, so I asked about was this set up? Oh. Like a typical everybody lived in a student house. We all lived in a student house, right? Pretty much, um, setup was it could be a house and have like four or five rooms, and each room is rented out to somebody, right? Mm-hmm. And so it said, okay, how many people are there? Will people be, be will other people be there? He said, yes. Is there a common area? Blah blah blah. I said, okay, no problem. So I called um, my friend, the, one of my my friends that I always call, and I said, hey, I'm going to go make so and so for this person to thank them. I really didn't want to, but I think at this point, it's it's the least I can do. And now, I think it's good to mention that prior to this, maybe I may have gone, besides the tutoring, so, besides, so with the tutoring, I think on mm-hmm. one occasion, I went to watch a movie together, right? Um, oh. or we, and on our way back, we stopped and grabbed a bite and we went home. I don't remember if it was that incident or one of the tutoring times that he said something that I should have pegged as a, as a red flag. As a red flag, okay. He said, why do you always tell someone that you're with me? Do you think I'm going to do something? I, I'm not quite sure the way he worded it, but it was one of my stylish, what I thought was my low-key, hey, girl, I'm here with Mr. or so-and-so. Yeah. You know, I'll come to your house after I'm done in about half an hour. That was what I did. And he said, oh, something about... Why do you always have to do that? Yes. You know? so, and, I, and, I, and I thought to myself, I thought I was being really sly. So the fact that he picked it up and knows that I've been doing it all the time, I thought, hmm. Okay, but then I should. I, I, I don't know that I would have called that a red flag, though. Okay. I know. I feel but like I think in hindsight now, uh, it's only a red flag in the sense that he knew he noticed it, and that's not bad to notice. But he noticed it in yeah. the sense that he was being mindful. He was studying me. I'll I, put it I that just way. feel like even after hindsight. It's I'm not still, sure that it's still, yeah. it's like, it's because again, you've known this person for a while and Two all years, these other, yeah. yeah. So I just feel like I still me. wouldn't like, it's, it's a really sly one. I still wouldn't have caught on to it as a red flag. Exactly. I, I, I think when I think about it now, he was studying me. Yeah. I don't think he necessarily was like, oh, I'm going to hurt. I'm going to hurt. I'm going to hurt her. I think he was studying my habits and because of how, how, how safety conscious I was, there wasn't any opportunity where if he wanted to attempt something for it to occur. Think about it now. Of you know, when you say, what could I have done different and so on and so okay. forth, even though it's not your fault. The reality is in this case, I think I did pretty much any and everything I could have to protect myself and to be careful. And because I was more. consistent, he yeah. had studied me. I think he had been studying and he had been waiting for an opportunity where he was going to you no, know, have me send me alone, right? Because again, I wasn't alone, but I'll get to that. So ultimately, you know, I went, I took my stuff, supplies, I went and, you know, I was, I cooked it, I showed him how to make it, you know, I, you know gave him the bachelor version. Um, and so just so you how, how time has changed and technology, mm-hmm. things that w- wouldn't be an issue now was an issue then. So back then, if you want to know when the bus is coming, you have to call a number for that bus stop. 
Oh, right? Okay. Remember them days? I remember okay. them days. You have to call the number or go on the website on the desktop, not okay. on your phone, okay, to see when the bus was coming. And, it, and if the bus is coming early, you have no way of knowing. It's too bad. You miss it. You I miss remember. it. So the best thing, your best option was to always get there before the bus is due. So the bus is on time. You're good. If the bus is late, you're good. And the bus comes early. You're good. So anyway, good. Yeah. Um, so I went, you know, it was, I was, I got there. I let my friend know I'm here. Okay. You know, I kind of surveyed my environment. He had other roommates who were there. So I said to her, oh, a lot of people are here, blah, blah, blah. I'm cooking, you know, and it, 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 I was casual. I wasn't like, I wasn't tense and scared the whole time. No, that was just me being me, my normal self. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but I wasn't like, Oh, what's that? Who's that? No, I wasn't. It wasn't. I wasn't. There was no reason for you yes, to be I, that way. Exactly. So I mean, I wouldn't go somewhere if I genuinely thought I wasn't going to be safe, unless I had no choice, right? Absolutely. I had a choice. Absolutely. I didn't feel that I was not going to be safe. I just was being extra about it. Like, even my friend is like, "Okay, here's here's the call. You know how your friend like." Now, wow, okay, we, we are calling. Are you okay? Are you yeah. safe? Yeah, dear. Hey, he can't, and she kept saying, he can't do anything to you. Like, um, like not him. He was that person that he's the last person. That the last person anybody would ever think would hurt a fly. He's the last he could person. never do like, anything. He was the last person. Like, and I'll get to, you know, the shock of it, even to myself, never mind other people. So, you know, I went, I, you know, I made the meal, and I had the time kind of watching time i would catch the bus they wanted to be too late they wanted to be you know, in a, where you know how buses end at a certain time and you have to walk a certain yeah. way and, and it wasn't like a big city so i wanted to be careful of that so i was done with making the meal and um it, it was then time for me to leave i didn't even sit and do a chit chat like oh how are you how's the day thanks for your help okay you do this you do that this is this method, this, that method and when i was done okay let it cool down split it into parts and you know mm -hmm. we want to eat i'm like you know what when i cook i normally not hungry, hungry. Yeah. so i was just trying to avoid staying for long because not because i was afraid but i just and it wasn't you just you use yourself of being cautious <laughs> yeah and yeah. it wasn't necessarily someone i would say just hanging like you know, like i said like it was someone who i would see as a big brother mm -hmm. you get what i mean yeah. so there was that okay so what we're gonna talk about like we're not understand like, like i mean you're your you're a postgraduate student. I'm like doing my undergrad. Like when I say you're 19, I don't, for goodness I don't, sake. I don't mean so masters. Like, I mean like I don't know what number of PhD he was at. Hmm. So do you get what I mean? So it wasn't someone I would just chill and hang with. It was more like, okay, uh, thank you, sir. Or, well, I didn't. But you know what I mean? That I know, level yeah. of it wasn't quite a sir, sir, but yeah. Anyway, I, feel you. Not, I get what you mean. A boisterous. So when I, so when when I was done, I said, okay, well, uh, can you please help me check? When the bus is coming, because mind you, again, because it's a student housing, people don't have their personal stuff in the in the common area. All you would find normally in a student housing is the kitchen. Yeah, it may be right. a couch, and you, you may not even find a TV. That's Back right. Then, yeah, everybody had their own TV in their room. In their own room. Had a TV. So you would definitely not have a computer in a common area, right? So I said, oh, can you help me check when the bus? Can you help me go online check when the bus is coming? So I went into now the computer was in his room. So that's why I asked him to check for me, right? And so then when he went in, put it up, he did the Egbo, as you're about to call it, the big brother thing. Say, ah, now you may send a message, man, check for you. Come on, uh, check it now. Ah, uh, Ninja style. <clears throat> so again, wow. under normal circumstances, I'm not going to stand there and be like, no, I shall not step two foot, two, 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 two five steps into the room to check stuff it's you know what i mean like, again if i'm that scared then why and it's there? also very casual and also a very nice yes. thing to say you don't and you don't yes. tell an elder the person. to go do an errand for you yes. like it's go. That, especially when it's like right there right exactly so i was like okay again and he, he has a point if i was that if if i really thought it was going to do me harm then i wouldn't have gone right so Absolutely, it was, again yeah, yeah. and that's what i'm thinking ah so come boy you're just being extra check this thing and just be on your way i was like okay i said ah it might be new as in no mm -hmm, mix. sorry mm -hmm. so i walked in you know did check i checked it so okay i already missed one bus and at that point half an hour was the next bus and so I said, okay you know what half an hour i'll time it in about 15 minutes uh, walk to the bus stop, which is only five minutes away. And then, you know, 10 minutes to spare at the bus stop. And he would walk me there and stay with me. So, uh, you know, I'm there. I'm standing. <laughs> After I've checked it, I'm actually standing. Oh, sit down. Oh, no, I'm good. So I'm standing by the door. 
um, of the room and he's talking. So I'm, and so, so I get up and I go, oh, you know what? I think it's time to go. And I think at some point when I came in with my bag, he took my bag and put it inside his room. Because again, it's a common area, a common right? Area. So that, yeah. let me put the room so it's secure. So that when we're cooking, just that way there's no issue. I, again, I didn't even think that deep. So now my bag is inside. Right, so I'm standing in the room talking, and then it's time to go. I go, oh, it's time to go. Oh, your bag. I go, oh, okay. So then I step like one or two steps in, and then you know he grabbed the bag for me, and to this day, I, <laughs> wow, okay, I can do this. So to this day, the way the, the speed and quickness in which it happened, it's like whoa. So he simultaneously, he's standing by the door, it's part of the picture. He's standing, so let's say this is the, door, the doorway. I'm here, he's here, I'm trying to grab my bag. So he takes one hand, mind you, this is his room, so he knows his room, right? Mm -hmm. And he takes one hand, shuts the light off, and shuts the door simultaneously. Because ah. the, the, the light switches by the door. So when you put out the light, so that's, that's, this, now, I wasn't trained then, but now as someone who's trained, sens sensory number one, he's cut off your, your, your sight. Yeah, you don't know where he's at. One of your senses are gone, and your sense wow. is gone. So lights off, close the door. I think he must have locked it, because I heard a, the, I'm not sure I heard a click. You know, you know those old school doors where you just click? Yeah. Turn the, so I heard, I heard a whatever, and then he, I was like, what are you doing? So th at that point, I was like, what, wait. That Nepa, like to be honest with you, I didn't know he put out the light. I saw his hand move to give me my bag, but the light went off. I mean, this is Canada, let's be for real. That's not normal. I, the first thing that, oh, is that a power outage? Like, I was confused. I didn't even think that like, something he bad up, was happening. Like, yeah, he, that he because, put out the light. Yeah, it's, it's when I heard the door, when, when he when, when I heard the door go click, that's when I knew, oh, hold up now. What's that? And then that click was one sec. So mind you, is half a second lights off. Then I'm like, what's going on? Then click at the oh snap. Okay. And then he at that point kind of pushed me to the bed. Oh so the room is not that big, right? Because when you're student housing, the rooms are not. Yeah, like little right? dorms. Yeah. Pretty much. So the distance between the door and the bed is maybe two, three steps. So at that point, he's he, you know, he kind of held me and moved me and then pushed me onto the bed. And I was like, what are you doing? Let me go. At that point, I'm thinking, this is not, I go, this is not a joke. Stop. And now I don't have, I don't have my bearings. Because I can't see. When light goes off first, it's pitch black. It takes you a while before you can even try to see anything. And even then, you can't see. So, you know, it, I don't even know how and I... this is an unfamiliar it. room, too. So Yes. And even if it's familiar, bearings. honestly... The shock and the quickness the of shock, it all yes. was, it was very fast. And, you know, it's, it's, it was me flailing in the darkness, because again, I can't see him, and I must have need him in the right place. And I, you know, I kind of like maneuvered, and I ran towards where I thought the door was, fell for it, opened it, and I, I, and I was yelling, and I ran up the steps. It's, it's a basement um, house, right? And I ran up the steps. And I remember thinking, huh, I was huffing and puffing. And he's like, calm down. I was just playing with you. So even, mm -hmm. even not that, there was still that, oh, it's not a biggie. I was just playing. Good. I'm like, playing with mm -hmm. me? Like, with who? What kind, of, what, what kind of play is that? Like, we, we, we yeah. don't, like, <laughs> let Naja stay for Naja. Like, we, we, we're not kicking it like that. I'm like, glad what? for your Jackie Chan moves because I, it's I, not I, for I, that I, your I, Jackie I, Chan I, I, moves. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> that's what saved you let's just My be dear. honest because if that play would not have been played it would have been something else so thank god that Jackie Chan move where you talk oh Damo story number two is coming uh. Jackie Chan no Jackie Chan Bruce Lee Jet Lee and Jackie Chan they're not the same level no they are not oh, oh no. that one so I got out and I was like what are you doing? And I was upset. He goes, oh, calm down. No biggie. Blah, blah, blah. He goes, oh, come back. I said, I said, I am never stepping foot there. I said, bring my bag outside. At that point, respect don't come out. Do you understand? But that is, but that is. I know said, no more respect. Now, yeah. Eddie, they send the message. Bring the bag outside. Yes. With me outside. So he came, he came out with the bag. Shana, I said, no, I'm, I'm not even trying to hear nothing. And I just walked to the 
Buster, and he followed me. I said, you know, you can follow if you like, every country. But like, he said, ah, you know, I wouldn't hurt you. I said, yeah, fine. And you may, you may have been trying to make a pass or whatever you're trying to call it now. But what, but there is nothing okay about you putting out the lights, locking the door, and pushing me on your bed. There's no, there's nothing safe so about that. Mm-hmm. I go, I go, I was, I was terrified, and I, that's not okay. You know, and he kind of made it off like, oh, you know, I would never do that. I was just trying to, you know, you know, eh, it's like, I mean, you know. Sad. So I got on the bus and I called my friend and I said, you would not, I'm coming to your house. You would not believe what just happened to me. And she was shocked. She was like, no. I'm like, yes. Yeah. She's like, the same person. I said, the same person. And she's like, ah. and then I was telling you that it the key, like, they're overreacting like she was shocked you know the research yeah it's it's shocking but the research does show Mm -hmm. that women who experience any form of sexual of harassment abuse Mm -hmm. or violence is typically from people they know they know right um because you let your guard down Mm -hmm. ideally or you're not expecting it quite frankly no one should be expecting to be assaulted i mean that's not a safe life but but these experiences have made me like more cautious right so so that was my first near experience now yes the person mm-hmm. can argue and say oh i wasn't gonna you know go that far really well we're never gonna know how far um, because I, I didn't give you the mm-hmm. opportunity to get further yeah. but you went far enough yeah you went far enough you did not you ask. essentially help me against my my will like you asked and i've let you know in the past i'm not interested in that you, situation i mean yes. like if you're gonna call it play like he did you didn't ask the other person if they wanted to play do like, you know what i mean what's up with putting on the lights and what's and up with putting up the uh, yeah so no there's no confusion in that one there's no nothing we can't wash that um, or try yeah. to embellish it anyway so of course that was the end of that egg soup. I mean, I already made the soup already for sure, but like, I'm like, yeah, at this point, mm, that like, egg soup, we should have joked on the thing, Seth. As in, mm-hmm. so <laughs> that's a Nigerian. I love how the Nigerian part comes out. As in, but um, <laughs> yeah, so that was my first experience. And it, it made me come to understand that look here, you can do all these things and yeah, you can take it's all not, the precautions. It doesn't, it doesn't mean it, it doesn't mean you know, anything. You just got yeah. lucky, and I thought, wow, so I can't even go make food for someone. And he jumped. Um, so he walked into the room, and he jumped on the bed. So I was like, so that one, I was like, uh-uh. I, know, I was, yes. Who does that? He does that. So then I said, uh, ooh, I was, I almost said his name. I said, um, so and so. I said, um. No, hey, I'm not. Please stop that. I said this is my room. I don't like anybody. You know, so I'm not anybody. I said, yeah, I don't mean anybody. Like, I don't mean. I mean people. A human being. You are a human being. I said, um, in my room like that. So, um, please, please leave. I'm gonna entertain Let's you go. all later. So then, again, in hindsight, this is kind of his way of trying to smooth his way into my space, but I wasn't. I wasn't, I wasn't having it. So he stood up and then he starts walking out. Again, at no point in time, I do not feel any danger or unsafe. At most, I feel annoyed or a little irritated. Yeah, because like, that was kind of like a jokey, inappropriate, yes, like jokey behavior. Absolu- absolutely. I'm still not thinking just... anything. Yeah. So I get to the door. Again, I don't know why it's always at the door. It's always, you know what? I just, had, I just the, the light bulb that went off on me. It always happens at the door. 